I'm not really a runner, honestly, and as regular viewers of the channel will know, cycling is more my thing. But the Garmin 4965 actually got me running, and after using this watch for some weeks, I really started to like it. I don't know if it's just the fact that it says I have a superior view to Max, or the fact that it has a beautiful screen, but the experience of using it really made me happy. However, as a scientist, I want to provide you with objective data on how the Garmin 4965 actually performs. So in this video, I'll be conducting a systematic and scientific review evaluating the performance and accuracy of the 4965. I'll be evaluating the heart rate accuracy during different exercises, testing the sleep stage tracking against an EEG device, and taking a look at the GPS tracking performance. So if you're looking for a comprehensive and reliable review of the Garmin 4965, then you've come to the right place. Let's dive in. Now the Garmin 4965 is one of Garmin's top of the line running watches and it shows honestly. I personally think this is one of the most beautiful smartwatches from Garmin I've ever tested. I especially like the screen, which is a vibrant 1.4 inch AMOLED display. And as I said, it's been a joy to use, but that being said, the Garmin 4965 isn't cheap, coming in at about $600. So the question is, is it worth that kind of money? Well, this video is hopefully gonna help you find out. However, in this video, I don't wanna focus on the looks or my subjective experience. Instead, I wanna focus on the objective performance of this watch. So I'm not gonna list any specs or functionalities for you since you can find those on Garmin's website. Instead, let's dive straight into the testing. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. But before getting to the results, I do have to mention Garmin sent me this device to test, but it will be going back to them after I'm done testing. Now let's get to the results. And I actually wanna start off with the heart rate tracking performance. Now to test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Garmin 4965 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now we'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors, and I'll be looking at a total of seven interval spinning sessions. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy over all of the rides. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the 4965. Now the closer the points are to this blue line right here the better the agreement and the darker black the color the more dots that there are. Now overall looking at this the 4965 isn't doing that bad. Most points are on or at least close to the blue line which is what we were hoping for. This means that most of the time the 4965 and the ECG chest strap are recording the same heart rate. However there are still some points away from the blue line both above it and below it meaning that the 4965 sometimes detected a too low and sometimes detected a too high heart rate. And we can even quantify this agreement by calculating their correlation which is this R value up here. Now the correlation is 0.92 in this case and since the correlation cannot be higher than 1 a correlation of 1 is actually not that bad. But let's now take a look at some example training sessions to see what this actually looks like. Here we see the first example interval spinning session where we see a very good agreement between the 4965 and the ECG chest strap. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue green here I plotted the heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the 4965. And for this ride at least I would say that the 4965 did a pretty good job. It generally overlaps almost perfectly with the ECG chest strap. However, we do see some moments where it showed a slight delay in picking up a change in my heart rate. You can see that right here, for instance, but also right here, right here, and right here. So this generally tends to be a delay in picking up a decrease in my heart rate. Overall though, this first session looks quite good. And honestly, most sessions look more or less like this. There was a generally good agreement between the Garmin 4965 and the ECG chest strap. Just sometimes the forerunner would show a slight delay in picking up either an increase or a decrease in heart rate. For instance, for this session right here, we can see that delay right here, but also right here. So there is this slight delay to be aware of, but overall it doesn't look that bad. So overall for most sessions, it's looking really good. There's really only one ride where the forerunner showed somewhat larger issues, and that's this one right here. So basically it shows a more severe form of the same issue. So there's a slight delay right here, but here, for instance, the delay is so bad that it never gets to the drop in my heart rate. And we see right here, and this is a bit weird, I feel, that instead of showing a drop in my heart rate, it all of a sudden showed an increase in my heart rate. And it likely detected double the heart rate right here. So instead of detecting roughly the 80 BP 
BPM that it should have detected, it tended to detect 160 BPM. So this is another issue. Often when watches have this kind of issue, they will tend to detect half of the actual heart rate. But in this case, it actually detected double the actual heart rate. Still, taking all of the sessions into account, this was really the exception rather than the rule. And overall, the Forerunner is performing quite well. But okay, I can still imagine you're thinking, what does quite well mean in the context of other watches? Well, luckily, I collected a lot of data over the last few years. So let's compare the performance of the Forerunner 965 to some other watches. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. Now in this case, I marked the Garmin 4965 in red, and just by its position, you can see it's somewhere in the upper middle class of watches. It's not up there with the absolute best watches, but it's definitely not performing poorly. But let's zoom in a bit to see that more clearly. Now these are all watches with a correlation of 0.9 and higher, and you will notice that the 4965 is very close to that value of 0.9. It's actually performing very similarly to the Garmin Fenix 7, but also for instance to some Fitbit watches and the Huawei Band 6. A few watches are just slightly better than the 4965, like for instance the Polar Pacer Pro and the Whoopstrap 4.0. And as regular viewers of my channel will know, the best performing watches are different Apple watches and also some selected Huawei watches. But luckily for those of you who don't like these brands, the Google Pixel Watch and some Galaxy watches are doing quite well too. Still, the performance of the 4965 is likely good enough for most of you, and for indoor cycling I could still recommend it. But of course the main exercise that the 4965 should be good at is running outside. So how did it actually perform? Well, let's take a look. I went on several short runs with the 4965 to test it. And here you can see an overview of that performance, which is a similar plot to before. We can indeed see that again, most points are along the blue line, though I would say that a few more points are away from the blue line. And we can also see that this R value up here has dropped a little from 0.92 for indoor cycling to 0.88 for running now, but it's still pretty good. However, I do think it's important now to look at some of the individual running sessions to see what kind of characteristics the heart rate patterns have. And that is displayed right here for the first run. Again, in blue green, we have my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And in red is my heart rate according to the 4965. Now, as you can see, I did some very short intervals and the 4965 is able to follow along with those patterns in my heart rate. But even though it can follow the general patterns, you will also see that the exact peaks and valleys in my heart rate were not fully detected all of the time. So I suspect that there's some delay in it picking up the changes in my heart rate again, similar to what we saw for cycling indoors. And because my intervals were so short, it sometimes struggled to keep up. However, let's take a look at some of the other running sessions. And here we have this second run that I did, which shows similar characteristics to before, though it might be a bit better. The general patterns match quite well between the Forerunner and the ECG reference. But again, we see it misses some of the absolute peaks in my heart rate and also some of the valleys. So it's sort of a damped version of the actual heart rate that I had. And that's basically what I see for all my runs. Also for this third and final example I wanna show you right here. It's pretty close, but it definitely shows some minor issues, which might be major issues for some people depending on their use case. And like I said, these general patterns were very similar where it could follow the trends in my heart rate and the exact heart rate was very close, though not exactly the same as that of the ECG reference. The values tend to be a bit lower at the peaks and a bit higher at the valleys. So overall so far, I would say that the Garmin 4965 isn't doing too bad. The performance during cycling indoors was quite good and the performance during running was okay, though it definitely showed some issues already. However, let's now take a look at a more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Cycling outside actually increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold onto the handlebars and there's also much more movement than bumpiness, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. I tested the Garmin 4965 for a total of 27 bike rides. Let's take a look. And an overview of those results is displayed right here. And as you can see, this is where the watch really started to struggle. Though most points are indeed still close to the blue line, there's now a big cloud of points below the blue line. Now, if the values are below the blue line, that means the watch detected a too low heart rate. This is actually what we've seen for many watches. The increased tension on my arms, but also the increased bumpiness from the bike ride make it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. And they then generally tend to detect a too low heart rate, as you can also see right here. And it's not really that clear to me why watches always tend to detect a too low heart rate while cycling outside, but this is the general pattern we observe when watches have trouble for tracking my heart rate outside. Now the correlation, this R value up here is also lower than before, it's now at 0.68. But let's now take a look at some of the individual bike rides to see what's going on. 
and what I found was that the quality of the rides was a bit hit and miss. Some bike rides like this one right here were actually quite good where the 4965 in red was able to keep up quite well with the ECG reference device. Now there are some deviations but this I still find quite acceptable. And there were more rides like this, like this one right here for instance where it generally shows a good agreement with the ECG chest strap. However, I have to say that there were also plenty of rides that were pretty bad, like this one right here for instance. We can see that for more than half of the ride, the 4965 detected a way too low heart rate. For some reason it really couldn't keep up and kept detecting a too low heart rate. Now I always try to wear the watch quite tightly and it didn't rock on my wrist for instance as much as the Phoenix 7 did. However, the 4965 still seems to struggle. And here you can see another example ride where the 4Runner really struggled a lot honestly. For basically the entire ride it wasn't able to keep track of my heart rate. The highest heart rate recorded by the 4Runner was around 120 BPM, whereas in reality I went close to 160 BPM. Now I actually also went on a somewhat longer ride with the 4Runner and you can see those results right here. Now for this particular ride the road was actually quite good and we didn't need to steer so much so I had my arms a bit more relaxed on the steering wheel and you can see that there generally appears to be a better agreement of the Forerunner with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Especially for the first two thirds of the ride right here there's a really good agreement. Now we can see that later on in the ride right here the agreement was a bit worse and also for this small segment right here I'm not sure why it was a bit worse right here so we took a break so it could be that the watch shifted for some reason. Still overall the agreement for this ride is quite good so with decreased bumpiness and also less tension on my arms it does appear to improve a bit. However let's again compare the performance of the Forerunner to many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And those results are displayed right here. I marked the 4965 in red and similar to before the more to the top right the device is the better is its performance. Now as you can see the 4965 is somewhere in the middle of all watches. It's definitely not performing as poorly as some watches but there are many better devices out there when it comes to cycling outside. Now the best performing watches in this case are again Apple watches and some Huawei watches. But even for instance the Galaxy Watch 5 and the Whoopstrap 4.0 perform just slightly better than the 4965. Next let's now take a look at another exercise that is really difficult for a watch to track namely weightlifting. Now for weightlifting it's not the movement itself that makes it hard to track your heart rate but this exercise is much more difficult because of the high tension on my wrist and on my arm making it again much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However first a quick side note if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube shorts channel. I actually posted some new shorts recently. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course this is totally up to you. Now enough self promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting which I tested during a total of 7 training sessions. And here we can see an overview of that performance and this honestly looks a bit better than what I expected. Most Garmin watches tend to struggle for tracking my heart rate while weightlifting and this is better than what I generally see. But we still see quite some points below the blue line here, again indicating a too low heart rate is detected and this is usually when I have a peak in my heart rate so during a set many watches are not able to pick up on that peak in my heart rate. Now this is the thing that most watches generally struggle with. The moment I start a set the tension on my arm increases and because of this increased tension the signal quality decreases and the watches aren't able to detect my increased heart rate accurately. And as you can see the correlation is now 0.77 which honestly isn't that terrible but let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see how well the Garmin 4965 actually did when weightlifting. And here you can see the first weightlifting session I ever did with the 4965. And as you can see it honestly doesn't look too bad. However I expect part of the reason is that for most of the training I did leg exercises. Which means there's no extra tension on my arms. And only near the end right here did I do some back and biceps exercises. And you can see that the quality decreased a bit. So overall this is a good first indication that it might do well but let's take a look at some sessions where I actually did upper body exercises. And here you can see the first one of those sessions and it is clear that the watch started to struggle quite a bit more. Now the peaks in my heart rate during each set are very clearly visible based on the sign line which indicates the ECG reference and only sometimes was the Garmin 4965 able to pick up on the same peaks. Now it's not doing terrible, some of them are being picked up on but some of them are definitely missed. And this is what we see for many training sessions. Some of the peaks are picked up on but some are missed so it's not 
terrible, but it's also not great. Still, compared to many other Garmin devices I've tested and many devices in general, honestly, it doesn't seem to be doing too poorly. And that's also what we see for this final weightlifting session right here. Again, I did upper body exercises and the Forerunner was able to at least partially pick up on most of the peaks. So I'm not too disappointed, honestly. I'm not sure if it's good enough for most people, but it does slightly surpass my expectations. Now we can again put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past and those results are displayed in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better the consistency with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see, at least relative to other watches, the 4965, which is marked in red, is definitely not doing that bad. It's outperforming quite a few watches, though there are definitely also a few better watches out there. Now you can see there's quite some gap in performance from it to, for instance, the Google Pixel Watch, but especially Huawei watches and Apple watches. And when we zoom in a bit, we can see it's similar in performance to some Fitbit devices, some older Huawei watches, but also the Whoop strap and the Garmin Venue 2. But again, some Huawei watches, but also the Google Pixel Watch and especially Apple Watches are doing quite a lot better. So for weightlifting, the Garmin 4965 is doing better than I expected, though honestly, it's still not that great. There are still better choices out there for weightlifting. And probably, honestly, if weightlifting is really important to you, you should get an ECG chest strap, which will give you the most reliable results. Overall, the heart rate tracking of the Garmin 4965 is quite okay, I would say. During indoor cycling, it performed really well. When running outside, it's okay. And for outside cycling, I cannot really recommend it. And as we just saw for weightlifting, it's okay at best. So you have to decide for yourself if based on this information is good enough for you. Since for instance, during weightlifting, it will likely miss some of the peaks in your heart rate. Therefore, overall, I'd give the heart rate tracking three and a half out of five stars since it's quite good for some exercises and not great for others however let's now move on to another important feature of the garmin 4965 the sleep stage tracking now it's become more and more accepted over the last few years that good quality sleep is potentially just as important for improving your performance in sports as is the training itself and Garmin seeks to help you to do this by giving you metrics that reflect your sleep stages and your sleep quality. Now, how you could potentially actually use this information on your sleep to improve your sleep quality is an entirely different question, which I might address in a future video. However, in this video, we're gonna focus on the sleep stage tracking of the Garmin 4965. So we wanna know if the sleep stages as estimated by the foreigner are reliable or not. To check if the Garmin 4965 can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. Now for getting an overall impression of how well the Garmin 4965 performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the Garmin 4965 in the future. Now I actually tested the Garmin Phoenix 7 against the polysomnography device and that video will release soon. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Garmin 4965. And I wore both the EEG device and the 4965 to bed for 10 nights and we will see how close the predictions of the 4965 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Garmin 4965. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all, we see that about 87% of what the EEG device detected as being deep sleep was also detected as being deep sleep by the 4965. So that's really good. That means that most of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected as deep sleep by the 4965. Now, if it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep at about 13%. Now, looking at the individual nights will help us understand this even better. And here you can see the first night that I wanted to share with you. On top, we have the sleep stages as recorded by the Dream 2 EEG headband. With along the horizontal axis, the time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom, we have a similar plot, but now for the Garmin 4965. Now in purple, I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device. And you can see there's generally a good agreement between both of the devices. All of the deep sleep recorded by the EEG device was also detected by the 4965. And in this case, no extra deep sleep was detected. So that looks quite good. And we see something similar for this second example night right here. Though in this case, the 4965 also detected a bunch of extra deep sleep. You can see that right here, but also right here, right here, and right here. And that's basically what we see for all of the nights. Most of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected by the 4965, but it does tend to detect a bunch of extra deep sleep. Now, light sleep agreement was pretty decent, with about 66% of what the EEG device detected as being light sleep 
also being detected as light sleep by the 4965. And most confusion in this case was with deep sleep, with about 15% of what the EEG device detected as being light sleep being detected as deep sleep instead by the 4965. Now this means that overall the 400 detects a bit too much deep sleep as we also saw for the individual nights. However, sometimes it confuses light sleep with either REM sleep or awake time as well, at around 10% for each. As you can see, REM sleep detection was by far the worst sleep stage for the 4965. Only about 43% of what the EEG device detected as being REM sleep was also detected as REM sleep by the 4965. Instead, it detected about 54% of what was REM sleep according to the EEG device as light sleep instead. And we can see that clearly based on the individual nights as well. Now this is a similar plot to before, but now with the REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. Now this is an example of a night where there was quite a good agreement between the EEG device and the 4965. So as you can see, the EEG device detected four or maybe even five REM sleep segments, and the four major ones were also detected by the 4965. However, this was the exception rather than the rule, and in most cases there was quite some disagreement between both devices. And you can see that in this second example night, for instance, here we clearly see that the EEG device detected five REM sleep segments, however the segments detected by the 4965 do not match up nicely with the REM sleep of the EEG device. Now this also means that we can likely not see my sleep cycles based on just the data from the 4965. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked here in red. And as you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles this night. However, based on just the data from the 4965, you wouldn't be able to see this. And this is basically what we see for most nights. There's not a very good agreement between the EEG device and the 4965 when it comes to REM sleep detection. You can also see that for this example night right here, where there's only a very slight overlap between both devices. And the 4965 actually detected very little REM sleep for this night. Awake time detection was actually quite good for the 4965, with about 83% of what the EEG device detected as awake time also being detected as awake time by the 4965. And if there was any confusion, this was mostly with light sleep at about 15%, meaning that 15% of what the EEG device detected as being awake time was detected as light sleep instead by the 4965. But this makes some sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake and it's only a relatively small percentage overall. And this is what it looks like when we look at the individual nights. Now here I mark the awake moments as detected by the EEG device in green. And as you can see, at least for this night, the awake moments detected by the EEG device are also detected by the 4965. But the forerunner did detect two short extra awake moments right here and right here. And for this second night, we get a bit of a mixed result. Some of the awake moments agree very well, but now the Garmin forerunner detected some extra awake moments, but it also missed some of the awake moments. Still, overall, it doesn't look terrible. And for this third night, we again see a pretty good agreement. Though in this case, it did miss two of the shorter awake moments, so the ones right here and right here. Still, overall, it generally agrees quite well. So honestly, this doesn't look too bad for the Garmin 4965. However, to put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the 4965 to that of over 40 other watches I've tested previously. Now, this graph shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. Now the watches marked in blue were actually tested against a polysomnography device or PSG device which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking and the ones that are not marked were tested against my EEG device. Now the results based on the EEG device and those based on the PSG device actually give very similar results. And as you can see, the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches. In this case, the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, the Apple Watch SE and Apple Watch Ultra. Now the 8 Sleep Pod 3 actually also performs very well and other good devices include different Fitbits, Whoop straps, the Withing Sleep Analyzer and the Aura Ring that are all not quite as good as the Apple Watches. And if we now plot the Garmin 4965 in the same plot, which is marked here in red, we see it performed quite okay compared to other devices. Now you can see it's close in performance to the Garmin VivoMove Sport, but it's especially close in performance to the Phoenix 7 and the 4255. So I suspect that the 4965, 255 and Phoenix 7 all use the same sleep staging algorithm. But what we can say with certainty that based on my testing their performance is very similar. However, again notice that based on these tests it is outperformed by for instance the Aura Ring, Whoop Strap and especially the Apple Watches and HD Pod 3. 
So the sleep stage tracking of the 4965 isn't half bad, but there are definitely better devices out there. If you just want a rough estimate of your total sleep time, maybe your deep sleep and also your total time awake, then the 4965 is likely good enough. If you really want to go a bit more deeply into your sleep stages, you might want to get an Apple Watch instead. Or if you want both decent sleep staging and some insights into your sleep quality, something like an Aura Ring, the Sleep Pod 3 or the Whoop Strap might be better alternatives. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep stage tracking of the 4965 3 to maybe 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at a feature where most Garmin watches actually excel, namely GPS or location tracking. Now, the way we will test the location tracking is by cycling the same route several times and checking if the signals overlap or if there's a big divergence between the recorded signals. Now, I tested the 4 on a 965 while I was cycling to and from work, and here you can see the results for 5 times I cycled home from work. Now the green markers indicate the moment that the watch connected the satellite signal and I didn't give the watch any extra time to acquire the signal. So the fact that all five green markers are very close together indicates that the 4965 almost instantly acquired the signal, which is really good. And if we move a bit further down the route, we see that the signals are quite consistent generally. There are some moments of deviation, but overall the signals are quite close together. Only just before the roundabout here is some deviation, but overall I think it looks quite good. And interestingly this right here is a location where many watches struggle and we indeed see that one or two of the signals are deviating a bit, but overall it doesn't look too bad. And I might have stopped here once to get some McDonald's, but overall it really looks quite good. The signals are quite quickly and the signals are quite consistent. Only right here do we see a bit more deviation, but this is a location where many watches tend to struggle. Overall, if you look at the consistency of the entire ride, it actually looks quite good and I'm not disappointed with the performance and consistency of the 4965. But I have another 5 rides to show you and those are displayed right here, so this is when I was cycling to work. Now I always started my ride on the corner of this intersection right here and as you can see the signals were acquired really quickly and quite consistently and if we then look down my route it also looks quite good. Again this is the same location where we saw some deviation before and here it deviates as well. We see that the signals overlap really well and I'm not disappointed. I think it looks even a bit better than what we were looking at before. The signals are really consistent and really close together and if we look at one of the corners for instance right here this also looks quite good. So generally this is looking really good for the 4965. Only here near the end do we see a bit of deviation, but overall for most of the rides the signals are really consistent and the Garmin 4965 performs really well. Garmin watches are already amongst the best watches out there for GPS tracking and the 4965 is no exception. So I'm not disappointed with this outcome, but take a look for yourself at the signals if you think this is good or bad. So the GPS tracking performance of the 4965 is really good and this generally appears to be one of the stronger points of many Garmin devices and in this respect the 4965 is doing as well as I'd hoped. So if tracking your run or your cycling route is most important to you, the 4965 is likely a solid choice. Therefore overall I'd get the GPS tracking 4.5 out of 5 stars. Now as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I really enjoyed the experience of using the Garmin 4965. I like the way it looks, the interface and the screen, and the general data presentation is quite nice as well. However, did the objective analysis of the Forerunner match my subjective experiences? Well, partially I'd say. The heart rate tracking turned out to be pretty okay, though it definitely has its issues. And the sleep stage tracking isn't that great, but for many people maybe a rough estimate of their total time asleep and their awake moments might already be sufficient. I don't know, it depends on your use case. However, if you're interested in your actual sleep stages, it's probably not the watch I would recommend. In contrast, the GPS or location tracking of the 4965 was really good and it would be one of my go-to devices for tracking my bike rides and my runs. So overall, the Garmin 4965 has actually charmed me a bit and it's been delightful to use. Now looking at the accuracy of the different health and sport metrics, they're likely good enough for some people or maybe even many people, though it really depends on your use case if I would recommend it for your personal situation. I'm actually really interested to hear what you are looking for in a smart or sport watch and what would be the most important feature for you, so if you could share it in the comments below that would be great. Now overall, if I just had to judge the performance of the Garmin 4965, I'd give it between 3.5 or maybe 4 stars. However, given how much I've enjoyed using it, I might just round it up to 4 stars. That is not based on the actual performance, but really my subjective experience with the device. Now, it is important to mention that of course there are some limitations to my testing. These are my personal experiences and how the 4965 performed on my body. And it could perform differently, for instance, if you have a different skin tone or maybe if you're a woman. 
Now, if you do decide to get a 4965, an Aura Ring, a Whoop Strap, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below. They do not cost you any extra, and some even provide a discount. Now, if you are interested in the Garmin 4965, you might also want to know more about the Whoop Strap and the Aura Ring, so check out these videos right here. Or if you actually find heart rate tracking very important, check out these videos on the Apple Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch SE. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.